Like a lot of people in 2020, I think we all found ourselves going through storage and cleaning up because of the obvious restrictions. And of course I came across uh, some older equipment that I had over the years, like that tape deck that I replaced the belts on, and I ran across my old fourth generation iPod. Now, this thing had really good sound quality, I remember, but I know that the battery doesn't work. And so, in order to avoid maybe further damage, or potential damage, I should say, I'm going to replace the battery. Even if I don't use it, I might sell it. If not, I'll keep it. But either way, I'm going to replace the battery on this fourth generation iPod. Much like this oversized box, this video may be slightly unnecessary, considering there's likely not too many people changing iPod batteries. But part of why I do videos like this is to memorialize these things in 4K so you can have the clearest picture when doing tech projects like this. So on we go. And yes, despite there being a battery inside, this is an awful lot of box for something this small. I realize there are shipping regulations for batteries, but this seemed a little extra. So a quick Google search will tell you exactly what battery goes into your iPod. And in this case, I bought the kit, and this came with the two spudger tools. And even though I had some spudger tools, I figured, well, this whole thing is like $8. So $8, here we go. The only somewhat challenging part of this was just getting that case open. And you just kind of have to jam the spudger into the side, and almost like you're peeling a potato. And eventually you'll find a little little spot that kind of gives, and you just kind of get one in there, and then you bring the other one in, and just kind of work your way around until it comes off. This wasn't really necessarily difficult, but I did go, you know, slowly. I didn't want to, you know, pry the thing too far open and maybe bend the metal or break a plastic clip or maybe tear some cable that's, that's hooked onto it. And you'll see there is one little ribbon cable that hooks the front to the back. But as you can see here, just go around slowly till it all comes off. This is the last corner. And as I do this, I'm just going to kind of keep it flat on top of itself and just kind of clamshell it open a little bit here. So you can see there's the hard drive and there's the cable kind of in the back. I'll zoom in on that here in a second. And you can see where it's connected. So it's this flat one right here. And note that I am going to pry this up just so I can get into it a lot easier but know that it is probably the most difficult one to connect back when you're reassembling. So yeah, it comes off real easy like that, but it took me about, I don't know, maybe two minutes to get that thing back on, so uh, just know that. Anyway, here's what it looks like open, and I'm just going to pull the metal part aside, and I'm going to work on the hard drive uh, plastic side, because that's underneath here is where the actual battery is. Here I'm trying to look to see if I can just maybe fold the hard drive out of the way, but I really can't, uh, and it connects right there, so I'm gonna remove that, and again, using the spudger tool, just gently kind of pry it out. There are a lot of pins in this one, but um, it actually goes back together very easily, so this was the easier of the removal. But first, I'm gonna try to foolishly just remove the battery connection, uh, which is a no-go right now before I remove that hard drive, so. Again, don't do this. You're going to want to remove the hard drive first. So I just cut about two minutes of me fumbling with that battery clip. And even though I was successful, if I would have removed this hard drive first, it probably would have taken me like 10 seconds. So don't use your fingers to remove the hard drive like I'm attempting to do here. Eventually, I realize there's a perfectly good tool sitting right in front of my face. And then I will eventually use that to remove this connection. But not yet. Let's try those fingers one more time. Again, you could just learn from my mistakes. Just use the tool, that's all you need. So going in the right sequence and pretending that this picture has the hard drive removed, you can now use your thumb and finger to simply remove this battery connection. Probably the most difficult part of this was trying to get this cord to go between the case and this little circuit board that you'll see kind of right here. So if you align the three battery cables, uh, they will go through this area just one at a time and slowly, and they will come out. Now, I started to come out of frame here by accident, and I was drifting down the table a little bit. Um, but I think this is a, still a salvageable part of this video, and really all I'm doing is I'm going to take the spudger tool 
and essentially just pry the battery out. There's a little bit of adhesive underneath the battery that attaches it to the case so it doesn't shift around, but it does come out pretty easily. So now it's time to just do everything but in reverse. One thing to remember here is when you're putting the new battery in to make sure it's aligned properly so that that cable is facing the right direction so that the cables can go under that little circuit board thing again, just like the way you took it out. Now getting the cables under there did take me a little bit longer than I like to admit, so I sped it up here. But they do go under there, and they will fit, so just keep working at it till you get it. Next I'll turn my attention to that hard drive, and it goes in the exact same way it came out, and this one is way easier, as you'll see it goes in pretty quickly here. Just line up the pins and it slides right in. Oh, and if you make videos like me, make sure that you turn your work so that the camera can't see it, and that always makes for a really good video. Admittedly, this is the worst scene of this video, but I only realized I was sliding out of frame afterwards when I was reviewing the footage. But I didn't want to scrap this entire video for one bad scene, so please forgive me on this part, as it is not my usual clear content. It's certainly not the worst place to slide out of frame, since this is essentially a part I already covered, only in reverse. But nonetheless, it's a good reminder to me for future videos. So with the hard drive connected, now comes the hard part of getting the top connected to the bottom. Now you probably remember earlier in the video where I mentioned this was the hardest part to do, so I'm going to kind of cut to the chase and tell you how I finally ended up doing it instead of me showing you the three or four minutes of me fumbling to try to figure it out. So what you want to do is get the top and bottom cases lined up like you're about to reconnect them back together. Then take the spudger tool and place it here and bring the pieces together so the cable snaps back into place. It took me a few times this way, but this was ultimately the way I was able to get it reconnected. And finally, the top and the bottom pieces should snap back together quite easily. I even put it on the table and pushed down on it gently, and everything went back together quite easily. And there you can see the Apple logo on the screen, which means it's starting up, and that means I was successful in replacing the battery. So there you have it. That's how to replace the battery in a fourth generation iPod photo. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.